Hi, before we start learning about logarithms, we must learn about exponents. Why? Because the concept of logarithms is built on the theory of exponents. For every exponent rule, there is a corresponding logarithm rule. So if you want to understand logarithms, you must understand exponents first. So let us start with exponents. When n is a natural number, b to the power of n is defined as b into b into b into b n times. Okay. So if there are n of these b's that are multiplied together, we call it b to the power of n. So suppose I said I want 5 to the power of 2, it means it is 5 into 5. Suppose I want 7 to the power of 3, it is 7 into 7 into 7. So 3 times 7 is multiplied, right? 7 into 7 into 7, that is written as 7 to the power of 3. Let us get some terminology, right? When we say 7 to the power of 3, this 7 is called the base. So the base is what is getting multiplied again and again. That's why I have used the letter b. b to the power of n, b is the base. The thing at the top here, 3, that is the exponent. So n here is the exponent. This entire operation, 7 to the power of 3, that is called power or powering. Okay, So we are doing 7 to the power of 3. Sometimes because we say to the power of 3, people think that the 3 is called power. That is not correct. It is okay. It is just a usage. The correct term for this 3 is exponent or index. 7 is the base. 3 is the exponent. Power means the entire operation 7 to the power of 3. Okay. So b to the power of n, b is the base, n is the exponent. b to the power of n is the power. Okay. So that tells you the entire operation. Let us now look at some properties using this definition. So we are looking at the property satisfied by b to the power of n, but only for natural number exponents. Obviously, this definition only makes sense for natural numbers, right? You can't say b to the power of half is b into b into b half times, doesn't make sense, right? We will later learn how to extend this to other numbers, but right now we will only focus on natural numbers. So what kind of properties are we talking about? There are three different properties. The first property is b power m into b power n is b power m plus n. The second property is b power m by b power n is b power m minus n. Okay. But this only holds when m is greater than n. And b power m whole power n is b power m n. So we are now going to talk about these properties for natural numbers m and n. All the exponents are natural numbers at this stage. Later we will extend it for all numbers. Okay. Why is this first statement true? Well, b power m is b into b into b m times. b power n is b into b into b n times. So you have b m times b n times. So totally you have m plus n times, right? b comes m plus n times. But if b comes up n, m plus n times, what is it? It is b to the power of m plus n. This is b to the power of m into b to the power of n is equal to b to the power of m plus n. Now this is the first statement. Let us think about what this says. 2 to the power of 3 into 2 to the power of 5 will be 2 to the power of 3 plus 5 which is 8. Okay. Similarly, 3 to the power of 6 into 3 to the power of let us say 4 will be 3 to the power of 10. In fact, you can extend this idea to many more numbers, right? So you can say 2 to the power of 3 into 2 to the power of 5 into 2 to the power of let us say 6 into 2 to the power of 4. Well, you are going to have 2 coming up 3 times, 2 coming up 5 times, 2 coming up 6 times, 2 coming up 4 times. So totally what do you have? 2 to the power of 3 plus 5 plus 6 plus 4 which is 2 to the power of 18, right? You can extend this idea to many more numbers. You can say b power m into b power n into b power p into b power q is b power m plus n plus p plus q, okay? So this is a very useful rule that we will use all the time. Let us now look at the second rule. So if I look at this rule, I have b power m by b power n, b power m in the numerator means b into b into b, m times. In the denominator I have b power n, 
So b into b into b n times and I have assumed that m is greater than n. So that means this number of b's there is more than the number of b's here. I can cancel these out. I can for every b cancel this out. I will be left with how many? I have removed n of these b's. m minus n. So that's what I am left with. So b into b into b m minus n times this will be b to the power of m minus n. So this gives us the proof for why that is true. It also tells you why m must be greater than n. If n was greater, you will have more b's in the denominator. So you can write the same rule but with 1 by b power n minus m. We don't need to worry about that. We will just restrict ourselves to this rule. Okay. So what does this mean? So let us look at this rule. So for example, suppose I have 2 power 7 by 2 power 4. I can write this as 2 power 7 minus 4 which is 3. So 2 power 3. Similarly, if I have 3 power let us say 6 by 3 power 2, you can write this as 3 power 6 minus 2, 4. Now all these with small numbers is easy. But the real power of this comes up when you have very large numbers because you do not want to calculate that quantity in the numerator because maybe m minus n is a reasonably small number. For example, 2 power 100 is a very large number divided by 2 power 98. This calculating is difficult, this one calculating that is difficult but actually just 2 power 100 minus 98, 2 square that is easy, that is 4. So this turns out to be quite useful in reducing calculations. Okay, let us now focus on the third rule. Okay, we have b power m whole power n is equal to b power m into n. What does that mean? What is b power m whole power n? It is b power m which is b into b into b m times into b power m into b power m and so on. How many times? I have b power m, b power m, b power m n times. So there are n sets like this. How many b's here? m b's, m b's, m b's, right? I have m, 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 n times. So m into n times. So I have b into b into b, m into n times. What is this? This is b to the power of m n. And what is this? This is b to the power of m into b to the power of m into b to the power of m. Right? n times. So that means b power m whole power n is equal to b power m n. So this gives you the proof for the third relationship and again a very powerful one. For example, suppose I had 4 to the power of 3 whole power 5. It is 4 to the power of 3 into 5. 3 into 5 is 15. Okay. Similarly, 3 to the power of 5 whole power 7. Now 3 power 5 itself is quite large. Whole power 7 will be very large. But I do not need to calculate it overall. I can just say it is 3 to the power of 5 into 7, 35. Okay. So this rule is also an extremely useful rule. That is all. Only 3 rules. No, it turns out that we also have a fourth rule. A B power n is A power n into B power n. Why is that true? Why should A B power n be A power n into B power n? Because A B power n is A B into A B into, into, into and so on. So you are going to have how many such ABs? You are going to have N ABs. Okay. Now when you have N ABs, you have A coming up once, twice, thrice, four, N times. A comes up N times and then you have B also coming up N times. So that means I can write this as A into A into A into A, into a N times into B into B into B into B N times. What is this? This is A power N. What is that? B power N. What is this? This is a b power n. So a b power n is a power n into b power n. That is the statement. And is that useful? Very useful. Because suppose I have let us say 12 to the power of 5. Now 12 you can write it as 4 into 3 power 5. So then you can write 4 power 5 into 3 power 5. And if you want further 4 can be written as 2 into 2. So then this can be written as 2 square 2 power 2 whole power 5. So you can then use that rule and you can say this is 2 power 2 whole power 5 which is 2 power 10 into 3 power 5. So you can split things up like this 
but actually it will turn out that if I am given this, I can go back this way, that also is very useful. A power n, B power n, you can put them together and write it as A, B power n and that's what makes this quite a powerful rule. So, these four rules, B power m into B power n is B power m plus n, B power m by B power n is B power m minus n, B power m whole power n is B power m n and then A, B power n is A power n, B power n. These four rules are extremely important. You must be very conversant with them. Thank <laughs> you.